we're currently driving from the South End location over to the Elizabeth location. And if you would just put in the context, you have these two locations approximately four miles away from each other. Some people might think that's too close. Do you cannibalize your own or does it create convenience because now people can go to either one? How do you think of owning locations that close in a city and is it really close like the drive time you know in a city like ours to go four miles can be yeah. significant 10 years ago i would answer this question completely different i used to think you know you find the right metro pocket and then 10 miles north south east and west you kind of that's how you build your radius but now i look at it the complete different way when almost like a certain level of cannibalization to make a bigger conversation in, or saturation in an area it helps with marketing costs it helps with especially being in kind of like a transplant city that people move from neighborhood to neighborhood every three and four years so when you have to go to say a suburb 10 15 miles away it, it your name doesn't follow you as much as you think it would you have to almost like start over you have to reinvent yourself you have to create new business relationships you have to i mean it's it's starting over so now what i love and if i was advising anyone doing a multi-pack it would be to find a great area where within three to five miles you could drop three units and you could use cannibalization to your advantage even the uh the space that we're walking into right now it was a necessity it's almost like a satellite location where it's not even great real estate but the day we opened we literally transferred 100 to 125 members from our south end location which was sold out it gave this location a base and it allowed us to rebuild the south end market so it i mean i just look at it in a completely different way than i did 10 years ago When you say found a satellite and it bled your current location, right? Took stress off, probably, you know, freed up time for trials to come in because classes were sold out. Yeah. What kind of utilization rates were you seeing where you're like, fuck, we need a second location? Like how, was it a membership number or was it like, hey, classes, too many classes are selling out to the point where it's actually a detriment to growth? It was both. It was a, too many classes were selling out that made us look at that membership number. At that point, as a single location, it was right around that kind of 350 monthly contracts. Look, we have flex pass people um, and we have drop-ins, but the core of our business is unlimited monthly contracts. So like 75 to 80% of our business in Charlotte is contracts. So that creates a ceiling, but we had to learn what that ceiling was. And honestly, it was, it was some it was more of a common sense choice we had members starting to get annoyed that they could not get into classes that they were used to that put us into a little bit of an emotional decision to find a space quick i wish we would have been ahead of it just based on the building even though i love this building on the interior kind of the street visibility the parking eh, it's okay but it does its job this is our 20 person model versus the south end being our 25 they both work this neighborhood i would say skews maybe five years older but it's great i love this place when someone goes to sign a lease also for are you recommending sign for a long time like bet on yourself type scenario or is it hey, get a shorter lease because you guys aren't going to have them start small and go to a bigger location for the most no. part so it's generally find the right spot and sign a long-term lease to lock you into a below market value rent for as long as possible yeah i mean like i like 10-year leases but i like them in five-year options your option not the the landlord's option but um our franchise agreements are 10-year agreements that you want to line up with your 10-year leases but having that five-year option to pull the trigger or not pull the trigger I think is nice to have this specific unit it's funny you ask that because I know we were discussing climber earlier or at another time and this gives us the opportunity to look at this facility as a 25 person facility and what I mean is if we are to use let's say uh, well this is a good way to look at it <clears throat> if you can see these cones here this represents our suicide lanes. 
right? Which is All right, so people are generally just sprinting from one of the change plates down the floor to the other. Now, as you can see, a 20 person class will only require 16 feet here, four, four feet per lane or four to six feet per lane. And uh, the problem is, say we go to 25, even though you can fit equipment, if you wanna utilize sprinting, you now go from 16 to 20 feet, which is problematic. So that's why looking at machines like Climber, um, I mentioned the sled mill, which was too expensive. Like this is how we could potentially look at this footprint as a 25 person class by intentionally or strategically looking at a piece of equipment that could replace sprinting. And then again, with this being, I'm not gonna call this area suburban, but I will say it skews five years older than say South End. I love the idea of you have two options in the city and maybe this speaks to someone a little bit differently than South End. So I think when we do test out new machinery like Climber, we are going to test it out here not only on the smaller footprint, but it also gives us a little bit of an older demographic to try it out with. While this is still within city limits, this is still a much more residential, suburban-ish, probably represents some of your suburban market locations a lot more this side of town. Yeah, and the other thing it represents, which I think people should think about, you know, our drive over, we're talking about cannibalization. When the 27 year old starts a family, or maybe family is the wrong word, settles down, whatever, whatever, whatever we want to say, and they become 30, 32, they're not necessarily always moving to like Ballantyne, North Carolina or Fort Mill. They're not, they might just be moving a neighborhood over, but guess what? They were used to what they loved in South End. So having this option over here, I mean, it complements the area. Perfectly. Yeah, not everyone's willing to give up that walkability, but you know, in exchange for having a Target and a Panera down the street from them type scenario. Exactly. And that's what this town, this area really represents. Five extra people per class, and that doesn't sound like a lot to somebody, but you run the numbers, let's say you're running 12 classes a day, that's an extra 60-ish people, yep. you know, per day you could run in. The average person probably attending in that three-ish to four-ish type times per week. I mean, it's a significant increase. You know, if you're looking at 350 and you can add five more people per class, what would you say, like, where does that kind of put your overall membership, you know, top end limit at? I still think 350 monthly members is the smart way to look at it because not getting into any type of franchise projections or earning claims, but you do have a place where you can have everybody happy and you're thriving without being greedy, right? And the other thing that I think is worth pointing out is a lot of people overthink those five extra bodies, right? The five extra bodies make sense because we can do it in here. But I mean, you coming from the real estate background or what you're working through now, you also know there's a real estate side of this where I like our 20 person model in some markets a lot more. In very expensive metro areas, saving 350 to 500 square feet is huge. Also too, in slower suburban areas, if you're not ramming classes, having a smaller footprint makes the class feel more lively. So it's not that 25 is better or, or 20 is better. It really depends on the real estate you're looking at and how it relates to the market you're trying to enter. Do you find the real estate first and figure out how do we make that work for metabolic or do you have a hey, metabolic fits in these ones we we'll only find real estate that looks like this? Both. Uh, we have about eight floor plans that work right now. Four of them utilize the sprinting lanes. Four of them utilize a potential alternative uh, machine. But typically we like to work in bowling alley tight facilities or square. And we have footprints that fit that. So it's a little bit of both. We, there are spaces though that we will go in and say, hey, this just can't happen. Because we run a very assembly line driven. Even though we are open to unique feels of buildings, when you land on our floor, everything should feel somewhat the same, whether sure. you're you know, in Austin or Charlotte today. How long far into the first location having that 350, when did this location open? How many years after? Probably four to five years. Okay, so let's say you hit 350 in year three. Do you sit on and be like, okay, was that a fluke? But if we still have this in year four, how, because also finding real estate is not a 
get it done next month kind of thing. So it's kind of this back and forth, like, okay, we've hit this number, are we sustaining it? Or was it a flash in the pan? I don't wanna go out and grab this real estate too early. How do you guys think about that balance? Because all the people, whether it's like, hey, I don't know whether it's time to add a class. This one class has been full for how many weeks before I decide to add one? Or when do I know I need to go get that next building? And there is a fine, delicate balance. Did you just have a summer rush? and things are good right now, or are you actually sustaining that level of utilization? Kudos to my team here in Charlotte that's always helped us do this, but um, we've never really had a big downturn. We've always trickled up, but I will say this. I know now we waited way too long. So 350 was not when you start looking for real estate because then you make an emotional purchase. We build our entire model off of breaking even between 125 and 160 monthly contracts. If you can think of, let's use 150 as an easy number. If you are 100 members above break even, you're a happy investor. You got a 30% return on 100 members at this rate, that's when you want to start looking for that next unit. Do not wait until you have disrupted or annoyed your membership base, unless you just wanna be a single unit. If you have goals to be a multi-unit owner in a pocket, I think 100 above break even, and 100 less than being capped is a good way to look at it. For us, we consider kind of like a sold out community at 350. So at two to 250, we want to start really thinking about what's this next location look like, especially today with the way real estate is, especially today. And so in the entire metabolic portfolio, these are the only two corporately owned locations, correct? The two yeah. in Charlotte? Yep. Will there ever be a third? Charlotte deserves a third. Charlotte deserves a fourth. Kirk and I are really looking at that right now. Kirk Finley and now, uh, you know, Finn. Yep. Finn and her husband, Landon, are partners with ours in the Charlotte portfolio. If you don't live here, it's hard to explain, but this city is a powerhouse and it deserves a third and a fourth unit. So we are looking at how to do that when being cautious on our own bandwidth and making sure that our franchise partners are supported.